let's follow this buck for four years and see what we can learn. We can look at both his body composition as he ages as well as how his antlers develop. One thing to notice that's unique about this deer is this bullfog thing he does with his neck. You can see him doing it a little bit there and it's going to be a bit more pronounced from time to time in the video. Here he is the first time that I ever noticed him and I believe him to be a four-year-old here. His legs are still look a bit long to his body and his back and uh, belly are mostly parallel. His neck is filling out, but it's not massive like you will see on older deer. I also like to look closely at their face, and here you can see a sleek face with sharp features. There's nothing saggy around his eyes or underneath his chin. His eyes are bright and round, and his ears aren't mangled. A lot of times in older deer you'll see split ears from fighting, and they get a bit torn up. Now let's also look at his antlers. Frankly, he's about average for a four-year-old in this neighborhood. Nothing exceptional. Sprout times are unique in that they're a bit far apart and slant in. The main beams turn up on the end. He's a 10 point with a kicker and basically has kind of short G4s. Nice frame to him, decent width, but again, nothing special for the neighborhood. Obvious question, would you shoot him here? Well, here he is as a five-year-old, and obviously he's made a big jump. He's bigger in every way, wider, heavier, taller, bigger overall frame, a magnificent white tail. I found it impossible to predict what a buck will do from year to year. Some grow in a linear fashion, some make big jumps from year to year. Some go up and then go down. Some never do much of anything. A lot of factors can affect what a buck's rack will do in any particular year, such as available nutrition, which could be an effect of rainfall during the year, summer temperatures, stress, post-rut condition, injury, illness, and the list goes on. The safest strategy is to let as many bucks as possible get into the mature age classes. Deer in different parts of the country also mature differently. Here in the Rio Grande brush country, on peak nutrition, the deer tend to peak between 7 and 10, whereas it may be much younger with northern whitetails. In Louisiana, where I live, I found 6 to 7 did generally be the peak antler growth. Now, back to this buck. You can see his body is filled out a bit. He's thicker and heavier. Easy to see how he's beefed up a bit compared to when he was four. Now look at that. Is that every hunter's dream or what? Well, here he is as a six-year-old. Did you see this coming? Now he's a straight eight point. Granted, a big eight point, but nonetheless straight eight. His head's starting to show the characteristic blockiness of an older buck and his body is bigger, but the rack is not nearly as big as the year before. A lot of people believe in trying to take the eight points out of a herd to let the better bucks breed. I believe in letting bucks fully mature on the highest nutritional plane possible and then decide what to do. Now, if you'd have shot him as an eight point last year because you didn't know the herd, then you need to know that this is what he is as a seven year old. The predictable thing about antler growth is that it can be so unpredictable. He's still a mainframe eight point here, but now he has those super cool drop times. He has that huge unmistakable frame, but none of the forks or kickers he had when he was younger. His body has continued to fill out, but even at seven, he's in great condition. Looking at him here compared to when he was six, it's easy to see how difficult it can be to precisely age a buck six or older, unless you know the buck and have kept up with him through the years. I hope this video was entertaining as well as helpful. I'll be putting together more age progression videos shortly, and I think you'll enjoy as well. Thanks for watching.